Hello and welcome, this is S tier 8. Today I want to play some more Inscription Casey's mod. I'm going to go with the insect pack again. And I think today we're going to try to get um, a 60 point run that is a little bit less difficult than the others. Um, I think we'll go with Icy Pelts, No Clover. Actually, we'll do No Hook, and that way we don't have Icy Pelts to worry about. No Clover, and all totem battles, no boss rares, and more difficult. I think having two more difficults on in the previous stream was a little bit too difficult, so we're, we're going to try this route and see if it's any better. Okay. Looks like we're going straight to um, Pelt Trader, so let's see what we get here. All right, let's see. I do want to go for an insect build. So, what do we want to get? I don't know what the mirror does. I think it just mirrors power in front of it. So the same amount of attack or whatever. Um, Cuckoo is always kind of fun. It'd be fun if we got that and laid, use a uh, flying insect or flying ant to do that. So I think I'll take it. And we'll take a mud turtle too, because we could power up something with it. All right. Um, yeah, let's go straight for a sigil swap. Why not? I'm gonna put the mud turtle's ability on my flying ant for now. That'll allow it to get hit um, twice without further upgrade. Not sure if this will work out, but it's always good to try. Okay. This will go straight with our flying net for our first round. Okay. Putting out the stronger things I already. Got a skunk. Gotta have a skunk standoff if we really wanted to. <laughs> I think we're about to get our um, ant queen down. And she can start chipping away at the stump. I don't think that she'll be able to get rid of the time that our flying ant already have uh, won the game for us. We'll just win it by a wider margin here with our other worker ant. There we go. I think that this neck is already off to a bright start. Oh, another flying ant. Um, yeah, I guess let's get it, and we will put that other sigil that I was talking about, the cuckoo one, on there. So we're going to have some flying ants that can do weird stuff, and I think that it'll be interesting that way. There we go. Interesting how if it's the same sigil, it removes the... Uh, center bottom sigil and moves it up to the left. I hadn't noticed that until just now. Okay, well, the skink is going to be um, waterborne and we won't bother putting flying it in front of it because we know it's just going to get attacked. So let's just put it here instead and could have blocked the skink. That would have been a better move, but at least this lane, the flying it will be um, safe on its own and We'll put the skunk down to make that skink not be able to fight. There we go. Now we just gotta save up for our uh, ant queen and we'll be good to go. There we go. I think we're gonna win this one pretty quickly. Similar story to uh, the previous round. I wish I had sacrificed the skunk instead, I would have had two more excess damage, but oh well. Let's go with the right boulder. Ah, another ant queen. And it has our little magnifying glass sigil, I'll forget the name of it, but one lets you look through the card deck, so that could be very useful. Um, let's get a 
stinky, stinky ant queen, why not? <laughs> Excuse me. Alright. So far we're sticking mostly to a insect only deck here. Fascinating. Um, let's see. I guess let's play this flying ant in front of the bullfrog. And um, we'll wait there. Oh, a coyote and an adder? Well, that's kind of uh, unfair. Um, let's put down this other guy here. And I think we're going to win anyways, so. Yeah. Okay, then. Hard to stop. All right. I don't think we need to necessarily go buff things up. And I hate to go to the woodcarver and have to sacrifice something. Um, there's a chance I might draw a nice card. However, I am down to just two items, and one of them kind of stinks. So... I guess let's go the woodcarver out. Ah, corpse maggots. I guess putting its sigil on the ant queen would be a good idea. Ah, and we can get worthy sacrifice, hopefully on our insects. Um, that would come in handy trying to get something with higher power level, you know? Oh, I guess they didn't have enough to make a sacrifice. Makes sense. I've got so many things powered up, I, I don't have a uh, second card to do it with. It's unusual that I get in that situation, but I've by and large cleared out my stuff, I suppose. Nothing is really default anymore. Okay, um, well, let's see. We could put out our Ant Queen right away and make her stinky on this kingfisher and block its damage and uh corpse maggots could come into play as well okay and he's going to pull somebody over so let's just play a squirrel to block that kingfisher lane i think he might pull back after the attack okay that's okay. We will play a flying ant. And uh, let's put this. Hmm. I guess we'll hold off on that worker ant. About to have a trouble with bait buckets, so we might get rid of our uh, corpse maggot. Hmm. Let me see. Another flying ant, so we could replace the, the ant queen is going to power down this guy by one, but she's still going to die, so that's not good. But if I can get another flying ant on the board, um, we'll have enough power to overwhelm them and win anyways, so I think this is going to be okay. There we go. Okay, nice. Oh, let's see. Random card or a beehive? I don't think I have anything that... Well, I could power up the beehive a couple times. That'd get us bees started generating, so let's go with it. It's also insect class, so... Um, we'll live and die by insects today. All right, and I think I read that if I put in a code in a safe back here that I might be able to get something. Um, let me see. Can't remember if I already did, but I think it was like 166 gets me something, so let's see if that's right. Uh, might be something else. Okay, I'll look it up another time, but I think I, I'd read there's supposed to be a couple of different items in Casey's mod, and I still haven't unlocked them, so I need to figure out how that works. Um, I could do a cave event, and then a duplication would be nice, but I kind of want to go to the woodcarver more than making a duplicate of anything in particular right now. 
five bone, six health, two again. I think we're gonna win that immediately. It's basically no chance of losing. I think I have nothing but insects, so. Ooh, okay. Worker ant has morsel and unkillable. Raven, that generates a rabbit, is a bone digger. That's kind of fascinating. An unkillable and corpse eater with card counter. Wow. And it would come back. I'm going to take that because that's going to auto deploy every time something dies after it dies. I think that Temptation was there to get that worker ant, but this is too good to pass, I think. Um, I guess we'll just go with our fuzzy head guy here and. You know it's a canine, not an insect. It'll be better than not having a totem um, whatsoever. Just in case. Alright, two elf fawns are incoming. Um, that's not good. Sounds like a job for calling out um, our ant queen using our squirrel over here. Um, and that'll generate us an ant that we can use, so you know, it's stinky, it'll block the elk pawns attack, so I think it'll be okay. Alright, and we can put down another um, ant over here, and that'll take it out two of the elk pawns. Okay. That'll leave just one to get rid of. And we can block its attack for the turn. Not that it's going to be super necessary, but we will be able to block it. There we go. Okay, ants are feeling pretty good. Um, now, combining stuff up, I could have an ant queen that's combined up using the fungi event. Or I could start heading over here so that I could trade in my teeth. It is a cave event, however. Um, putting the corpse maggots power on something else would be nice, but really the beehive is the only thing I could do that to. Everything else has already had sigils communicated onto them. Um, fungi? kind of like things the way they are. Um, the Ant Queen, since it's more expensive being combined, feels like an okay idea though. Um, I really hate to pass up the idea, or the opportunity to get Woodcarver. I think I'll head this way. Um, Alright, Dire Wolf Pup. I could take its abilities and maybe put it on insect or something if we get one. Or maybe in the cor corpse maggots. Oh, I could have ant spawner. Oh man. Or double strike. I guess I want to go with double strike. So if we get two ants on the board, board that would be enough power to uh, just about win a game. Cause that would be 8 damage. Okay. Let's see, a raven that's coming in. Um, if I put that on there, I do wonder if it'll gain stats. So... Let's try... Let's try putting it on the board, just for Fonzies. It is airborne, the raven is, so it's not going to matter, actually. I was thinking that the raven would kill it, but no, it won't do that. Okay. Alright. Now the ant queen should slow down the raven a little bit here. Now we have a porcupine. Oh, looks like the stats did not improve. 
Ah, and it redeployed to its own spot. That's funny. That almost looks like a glitch. Look how the card isn't in the right spot. That's interesting. So it's just going to end up covering that spot forever. Uh, I should have thought about that as a potential. <laughs> I didn't know it would cover its own death, though, I guess. So, interesting. All right. We got us a golden pelt and a rabbit pelt. All right, dire wolf pup. Um, do we want to put your abilities on something? I think we do. I think we want to put you on the uh, hmm, the beehive. We'll do it that way. I think there's still a chance that I might use the uh, corpse maggot's ability on something else. turkey vulture. That's rude. Um, it does have the skink ability on it too. Golden pellet could block it for a turn. Here we go. Oh, now we have a raven egg coming in. That's less than ideal. Uh, the golden pellet, of course, didn't do its effect due to the uh, airborneness. Okay. Not sure we're gonna be able to recover from this situation. That turkey vulture doing so much damage. Need items for God. And I drew the wrong card. Um, I guess that that's gonna be it. Corpse maggots aren't gonna have a chance to get deployed, so fortunately they're gonna win. Wow, that one turkey vulture was enough to uh, really wreck me. All right, doubling, doing something with fungus or getting items. Well, we're gonna run into fungus anyway, so might as well get stocked up on items in the cave event. I think that'll be the best thing. Okay, I think we're gonna win Sigil pretty easily, so let's do it. There we go, first card, got it, nice. Ah, a ringworm that's an ant spawner and a burrower, a leader and corpse eater um, with mirror, and a bat that has double strike and made of stone. Um, I'm going to go with this guy. Having that auto deploy ability can just be so handy. Alright, possum, skip a turn, and black coat. Easy choices. Alright. I think that it doesn't make sense to combine the ants because the cuckoo egg will kind of supersede the um, damage blocking, so. Let's go with the Ant Queen instead. Having it have 6 health and those sigils will be plenty enough, I think. Alright, at least I have items, so worst case scenario, I'll bust them out for this fight. Okay, so could put down a flying ant that immediately gets demolished by a trap. Um, or we could put down this one and block the strange frog from coming out. I think that, that might be a wise decision. And we'll use the other flying ant um, in another lane here in a moment. Okay. We'll do them over here. And uh, that will be enough to take it out. Alright. Let's keep on drawing. And 
this one should auto deploy where the flying ant is about to die. Alright. Good, good. The dire wolf pup. Oh, that's a happy, happy time. Um, the beehive could go down and it would survive the dire wolf pup's um, first attack. So let's uh, go for that. And I think that we'll be okay. Generate us a bee, and the beehive will get stronger and possibly kill the dire wolf pup on the next turn. Um, now we have a bee that'll grow up and also generate bone. So, um, yeah, let's put. Let's see. I guess we'll put a bee down over here and keep going. Time to trade. I think I have four pelts in my hand too, so we should be able to wipe this out pretty well. Um, let's see. I actually have enough power that in one turn we could win, um, but I would have to not trade most of these things. Uh, let's take out this wolf as bifurcated or um, double strike. And I don't like the rattler either. Um, so we'll take it out. Ringworm is not an issue. Uh, the flying ant I don't really see as an issue. I think the wild bull is the bigger and the porcupine could be a problem too. So we'll take those all off the board. And let's see about getting rid of that ant if we can. There we go. turtle is out of its shell. There we go. The auto deploy got us. Good. Perfect. I think my team's going to be pretty hard to beat unless the game just starts really flagrantly throwing BS at me. <laughs> uh, okay. So... I guess let's get this dire wolf since I still don't have an insect head for my um, totem yet. And it'd be nice if it could apply to something, you know. I will go ahead and go up to um, the wood carver again because I'd really like to get um, the insect head somehow. Two of again is, I think, going to be a clear winner. Oh, wow. Wow, I guess the pelts can make you lose. Dang, I'm not sure I've had that happen quite like that before. Alrighty then. Um, let's see, rabbit generating or bone digger. Hmm. Or we could get us another head. I think that we'll just stick with that and we'll do double strike again. Still no sign of an insect head for our poor little totem. Alright, a porcupine. We could just go ahead and deploy down our um, guy here. We'll do a little bit of damage and uh, get redeployed if he dies at the hand of the porcupine, anyways. Oh, oh the corpse maggots can go out. Okay. So let's put this in front of the dire wolf, so we don't want it to uh, get ahead of ourselves. Okay. Interesting that it blocks both attacks of the dire wolf. I like that a lot. Um, I think that we're going to need to get our black goat out. Well, I don't know actually, because this guy is just going to block the dire wolf for forever. Um, yeah, I suppose we can just save up. Well, 
That is hilarious. Okay, and um, yeah, let's keep going. It's hilarious that it can take down a dire wolf like that. I've never had that combination of sigils before. Imagine how strong it would be if it was on, say, a wolf or something. Um, yeah, I guess time for an ant queen to come along. This is our super strong one, so she's going to be great. Alright, and we get to pick a card, too. Let's do this guy. Nice. Man, this is so much power on the board. It's crazy, really. Get our um, dire or worker ant on the board. Yep. And we'll start sweeping up. <laughs> this is too good. Oh, let's see. Looks like. Did one of my cards actually finally die and go away? I thought I had another tentacle arm and, uh, yeah. Weird. Um, well, let's see. We can get four, seven damage. Let's put our flying ant on there and that'll boost it up even higher. Um, so I guess it's three, four, uh, seven. 10 damage, so we're gonna have 9 excess damage on this one. So we definitely need to go trade in for pelts at some point. And we do have 2 we can go ahead and trade in now, so let's go for that. Maybe we'll have something to uh, sacrifice for a bone token here in a minute. Ah, oh, rabbit pelts getting pretty good stuff. Um, now is a moose buck worth getting? Perhaps. Um, I do have a dire wolf already, so I could get a second one and try to use, uh, fungus, you know. Um, what else do we have going on here? Two dire wolf pups would be really nice to combine, but I guess it's late for that since we've already sacrificed. Night sigils going on something else um, might be interesting, like getting it on corpse maggots, or that's, it's either that or the dire wolf. Um, hmm. Let's do, I wish that we could trade the other card and see what the higher value ones it's going to present. Um, I guess let's do another worker ant, why not? And Mantis God. We might take its ability and put it on um, that worker ant that we just got for funsies. Alright, somebody to sacrifice. Well, everybody looks so strong. Corpse Maggots um, might be a first good pick, but I think the Dire Wolf would be an even better pick. We'll do it. It kind of, it's high cost, it's kind of tough. Okay, um, I guess we could head it over to our, um, pelt collector, but there's a chance to do a sigil swap, and putting the mantis gods on the worker ant would be really nice, um, since it's one blood cost as well. Um, I don't have any pelts to trade in at the moment too, so anything I want to power up? Maybe, maybe not. Just looking to see if there's anything. Maybe the beehive could use that. So let's go to the right. This is just all guesswork at this moment, but let's see what's possible here soon. A wolf and a porcupine. 
All right, I guess we... Um, oh yeah, so this one has Corpse Eater, not them dying. That's what I was confused about earlier. So let's get this guy down since it has card counter. And it would be able to take out the wolf as long as I don't play another card out of my hand. Ah, so that is the tricky part. That one came out because that one got redrawn. So that's how we lost it, I think, earlier. Okay, um, let's do the uh, other guy right next to him, and that should be okay. Okay, and let's get this. If we put down the flying ant, um, we'd get boosted for a turn. That's not going to be enough damage. Um, actually, it might be two and three. It might work, actually. I think it is at least close enough to be worth it. Um, I want to put down the possum in front of the wolf. We need to block that for a little bit. Oh, there's the mod activating on us again. And we have a worker ant. Um, I think putting it getting rid of our flying ant makes the most sense because it's going to die to the porcupine anyway so we need to get rid of the wolf gun but it's not looking all that great for uh, the home team here about to run into some trouble I think at least we got that one chipping away at its column our squirrel and get beehive however the wolf would take it out one hit we'd get a uh, thing generated but I'd have to skip a turn I think that there's no winning this one at this point it's just too much power on the board sadly um, yep Okay, that was a tough one. Maybe I should have been more aggressive on uh, the early part of that fight. Oh, not enough for a golden pelt, but enough for a wolf pelt and a rabbit, so I'll take it. Alright, who are we going to add some power to? How about... Hmm. I'm tempted to say the beehive, but if I just put this on the mantis god, it'd just be one cost, so why not do it? I mean, that's 6 HP right there for one blood. It's hard to say no to that. Looks like I'll have another chance to go to the woodcarver here in a minute as well. Uh, no. Let's see. Wolves that one hit kills. Okay. Well, we can put a flying ant down to uh, put a cuckoo egg in front. Yep. And let that be that for that turn. Okay. Um, they may be about to do irreparable damage to me here. Um, I can go ahead and get this, but that'll only bring my attack up to like four for the turn. So I guess I'm going to do a skip and, um, we'll do this and that'll be enough to win the game on the next turn, I think. Um, that wolf otherwise is going to be too much power on me, I think. Plus, they had a possum. So, the matches are getting increasingly cheap, in my opinion, here. They're putting out a lot of firepower. Like, disproportionate. Uh, 
I guess let's get the alpha just in case we end up getting stuck with the canine head for our totem. Yes, the insect head. And do we want double strike? I think we do. Doesn't make sense to get the worthy sacrifice when I don't have really hardly anything with um, three blood. And I've only got like an ant queen with two blood, so here we go. All right, who are we gonna give some health? How about I'm tempted to do the mantis god, but the beehive generating bees would be really nice. Um, or this guy having five, being able to stay alive longer would be nice as well. Um, Oh, this is hard. I'm gonna say the Mantis God deserves it the most. So if I can get it to last this one extra turn by having three health, I think in the final two boss fights, that'll be a big deal. Okay, good. We have our double strike wolf and a pack mule. Ant Queen can survive the pack mule, so that's fantastic. Um, let's see. Flying Ant could actually survive it too for its first turn. And we don't have the smoke, so fortunately I think it, we are just going to get it on the board. maggots will deploy onto the wolf. Okay, well, corpse maggots will take out the wolf but not put any damage on the board. So if I play the ant queen, she'll definitely do it. However, I'm a little bit afraid about doing it that close to uh, the end here. Um, I guess I want to have to. This feels like a potential misplay, but I just don't see a better out here. Okay, I think one of my undying cards, this one, would be best to get in my hand. Okay, good. Probably going to lose. Yep, there we go. It's nice that it transformed instead of into the gold nugget turned into that. I'm not sure I knew that that was a possibility. I just love this game because it's like a new thing every time you play. Alright, let's see about getting rid of um, guess the adder would be a good one to get rid of. I wouldn't mind. I wish that I had enough time to get that Alpha's ability put on something else because it would have been great to have it on a different card. Ah, okay. Well, I guess let's stick with. Let's see, what sigil do we have? I'm totally blanking on what I have. I guess it'll be Corpse Maggot, so just since it'll take advantage of it. Just getting excited. Um, oh yeah, we had double strike. That's what it was. Okay. So I don't think I need to go to wood carver. Um, how many pelts do we have? We have three pelts. We only have one item. 
Um, oof, that's a hard pick. Two more items or three more cards. I guess I'm going to go with cards for better or worse. Let's see how this turns out. Sometimes it works out though, you know? Um, okay. I guess a wolf cub and let's do a mole and let's see here there's a turkey vulture that generates ants the corpse maggot so it gets stronger after a turn the wild bull that could have its powers added to something else if it was sacrificed but that seems like an unlikely thing um, an adder that would run away, that's not a bad idea, um, if it could survive. I think I'll go with corpse maggots. Okay, let's see how this goes. It'll be hard without all three items, so I'm not, I'm not truly expecting to be able to win this one, so... We'll see. It's unfortunate I didn't get to pick up a uh, pack rat or some other card that would have given me the, you know, item sigil. Okay. So, let's see. I guess putting a wolf cub in front of the mole man would be a wise decision. Um, and we could also get flying ant down. So if I play one here and then another one in front of the mole man, that should leave the mole man in front of the amalgam. And I don't know if, I don't think, a uh, mole man does have mighty leap. Okay. So let's do the two, actually let's do the wolf cub and well, it's going to die to the amalgam in one hit. We do need to get that damage on the board fast, so these both cost, or all of these cost one blood. Maybe we will do the two ants to start. And we'll put this one here because it can actually survive a hit from the amalgam when the time comes. Okay, and that'll be it. about to do his BS of smashing my cards up, so um, we don't want to play the wolf cub just to have him lost right away. And we got to the next phase. Good. Okay, let's see, is Leshy still holding out his pickaxe? He is. So let's draw from here. And we got us an alpha. Um, well, this Daniel card is going to come in and really screw things up for us. So I'm tempted to put our alpha down, and that would get us six damage with the flying ant alone. So we may actually we'll get six and four. That'll get us to the next phase. Okay. Wow. I don't think I've ever had it this easy. He didn't even get through the prospector. Wow. That's uh, pretty insane. So let's do another from here and we'll get our wolf cubs started. Okay. Ah, uh, there's our little buddy. Um, Unfortunately, well, I could play it over here and, it, and the alpha could feed off of each other, but and it reflects the power, so let's see what that does. That'll be interesting to see. Okay, and um, I should have drawn from there and got the black goat, but that's in right. Let's see. Um, draw here and the 
flying in bifurcate or double strike. Okay. Here we go. Alright, let's see. Mantis God and might as well go ahead and get this in our hand. Um, and we're gonna take a strike here, I think. Alright. So let's get our Mantis God on the board. It has three health, so it should be able to get us most of the way there. Yep. Okay. Wow. We did it again. And <laughs> we can put them all on there just for fun. He can hang out with the Mantis God. Wow. Mantis God did so much damage. Wow, I beat it in 45, 46 minutes, almost exactly even. Four bosses down, 151 cards drawn, 10 most damage on the scale in a turn, with 47 scrolls harm, 53 sacrifices, and 14 misplays. Wow. Entry number six. Work on the mod continues. I was appalled to find that Leshy chose to use the Casey Hobbs ghoul skull as a trinket on his shelf. He fills it with teeth for the trapper after every boss. Kind of lame because it's tedious to keep getting up from the table just to collect the teeth. I'll have to hack that out. He'll hate me for it. And we unlocked a Wolverine card. When Wolverine attacks an imposing creature and it perishes, this card gains one power. Oh, that sounds great. Okay. In the new starter deck, looks like we have a pair of kingfishers and whatever this weird thing is let's see um challenge unlock single candle you're limited to one life 30 challenge points wow yeah um that might be doable you know like it really might be because i mean i assume you wouldn't get smoke but i might check that out in our next stream but all right, hip hip hooray, we got another win. Thanks for watching, this has been S tier Rank. Follow me on Twitch and Twitter at S tier Rank. I'll have a replay up on YouTube soon. Thanks, have a good day.